Hello, everyone. Welcome to Warrior Church. For this session, we are excited all over the world. Just get ready to hear from God. We are excited about what God is doing. And this is, this is the time where we should not back off. And I'm telling you, there is one thing, though, that I want to talk about today. And before I pray for you, I just want to tell you, it might be time for us to trim down. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for your spirit. And I thank you that the eyes of our hearts are in, uh, flooded with light. And I thank you, Lord, that we understand the deep mysteries of the kingdom because you have revealed it to us. And I thank you for Warrior Church. And I thank you for what you're doing. Jesus, thank you so much for what you've done for us. Holy Spirit, you can have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, yeah, so I said it, it might be time to trim down because, uh, you know, most of you think, well, you know, maybe, maybe I do, but I'm not talking about physically. What I'm talking about is the Lord said that sometimes when we get into prayer, he will start speaking to us. And what he told me was, it's time to trim down because I want you to go through the narrow way. Mm. And, and when he said that, I saw this vision and uh, I looked at the, the outline of a body that was in the wall that I was going to have to go through. It was real bright on the other side. And I saw that I, my, my, this part of me could fit through it, but my head was too big. And I saw that I, my head was too big to fit through the, 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 the outline of the, of the person that was in the wall where I was going to walk through. So it was like this form of a, of a person hole in the wall. And this was the narrow way, but my head was too big. So the Lord told me I need to trim my head down. <laughs> so um, he said, you need to humble yourself. And that a lot of people, they never find the, the narrow way because, and it says if you find it, and we're going to get into that. It's in, in Luke 13. Uh, verse 24, it says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. I say to you, I, I will seek to enter and, and, and some will seek to enter in and will not be able to. Think about that. Yeah. Okay, so I had this vision when I was in prayer and the Lord said to me, I'm speaking to people in prayer about the narrow way, but they need to trim down. But it's not a physical, like the body size. It was the head. And, you know, in the flesh, if you if you have a, a head that's bigger than, you know, then you, you know, you might feel like at times like I, I remember when I was being fitted for a helmet to fly, you know, and I had to wear a helmet on, on one of the aircraft or whatever. And um, the, I had a bigger head than than what, what was normal. And so they, they had to fit, you know, something so that would fit for me. So I had a bigger helmet. And then I, got, and then I thought about that with spiritually and about uh, as it does with pride, that if we had pride, that it could cause us to not enter in to what God has for us, which could be a narrow way, uh, which I know is, you know, but, but it's, it has to do with obedience. So sometimes... The Lord said to me, he said, sometimes because of pride, uh, it, our head can't fit through because of, uh, we're supposed to submit and be obedient to his word. And we need to allow the Lord to burn out the pride in us and work about pride and trim us down so we can fit through the narrow way. And I realized that most of my life, you know, I remember back as a teenager when I got saved, the whole thing that God dealt with me about was pride, you know, all the time. I actually heard the voice of the Lord before I got saved. I heard the, the audible voice of God. It, was, it came up from behind me and I was looking in the mirror, getting ready to go to school, to high school. And I think I was 18, 17 or 18. And he said to me, when are you going to stop being something you're not? Out loud, it shook the whole bathroom in my house. Oh, wow. What are you going to stop being something you're not? And I started crying, and I don't cry. <laughs> and I think it was about a year later I got saved. Oh, wow. But I heard his voice audibly. So think about that, you all out there, is that God, God was already working on my pride. I was trying to 
pump myself up to be everything that I needed to be so I can get in the Air Force Academy. I was going to talk to senators and try to get them to recommend me the Air Force Academy. I was trying to get uh, every to get class president, to, to get valedictorian, to try to get a 4.0. I was doing everything. I had taken college classes in high school to try to get enough to qualify. And, and still, I was going to have to go to summer school at a college in order to get ready for the academy. And I, I, I was just pumping myself up. I was, uh, I was being very forceful. I was very prideful. Uh, even when I was talking to the Senate, senators in, in my state, to try to get them to give me um, a nomination, which you had to have a nomination from a senator or uh, a representative. And so I was targeting all of them. I think there were five in Pennsylvania between the Senate and the House. And um, the Lord was just saying, you know, when are you going to stop this? So a year later, when Senator Hines did, he... I thought he was going to recommend me, and I got a letter saying that I, out of 3,300 people, I was runner-up. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, you'll get it next year. And I just, the Lord said, you're going to Bible school. You're not going to the academy. And I, I just started crying. And I did. I, within a couple of weeks, I was in Bible school, never went to the academy. But the Lord used, used um, trimming me down and humbling me. And uh, when I gave my life to the Lord, he said, you're not going to the academy. You're not doing any of that stuff. You know, you're going to be a mouthpiece for me. You're going to go to Bible school. So I sat in Bible school for four years thinking about jets the whole time because I thought, what has just happened to me? Because I was just a brand new Christian. Yeah. So I didn't know, you know. So there is a narrow way and few find it, Jesus said. So why is that? It's because wide and very available is the road that leads to destruction. And everybody seems to go on that. And so you see the world going the way it is. You see all kinds of manipulation and lying and cheating and witchcraft going on around you. And there's very few people that will actually, like, if no one's looking, will still do the right thing, you know. So there's all this, all this, uh, account, there's no accountability anymore. There's no, um, you know, sincerity. Um, you know, if I find, if I found money, I, I, we found bags of money on the airplane. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars uh, in and out of Vegas. But see, if it was on the airplane, it's not ours. It's, it's the company. So you can't keep it for yourself. And I would, I would watch employees find uh, three and four carat diamond rings and just keep them. And I'm like, no, no, you know, give that to me. We're turning that in. Someone, that's someone's wedding ring, you know. And um, they, they we're going to keep it, you know. And the, and the same thing with the money is split it up and things like that. And I'm like, no, 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 we're not doing that. And, and um, so there, where's the accountability at, you know. And, and so there's a gateway to life. And that, that life is walking through Jesus. But see, Jesus is king, and we're not. <laughs> and so um, this week, try to think about what, what I'm talking about here. And, talk, and, of course, talk among yourselves about this. And really, really pray about if you need to trim down in your head a little bit. Because Jesus is very meek, and he's very, very humble and mild. And he asked us to take his yoke upon him and learn of him. He's very humble and meek. And he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Learn of me. So there is a yoke, but it's, it's not a bondage thing. It's, it's learning to be disciplined and to not push yourself forward sometimes. And I know this because when I was on the other side, I saw that we were supposed to be like a sailboat, not a, a motorboat, there's a speedboat. I saw that we were supposed to be like a sailboat. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, is, you know, the spirit of this world really pushes you to be aggressive. Uh, you know, if you're going to win, if you're going to be the best at anything, you got to like really be aggressive. But see, you get to the place where like you would trip an opponent to win a race. You know, you would cheat on ballots in order to get, to get in um, to a, a office or a place. You would you would do other things that were evil in order to get promoted and you wouldn't care you know wouldn't care who it was that got in your way mm -hmm. but see in heaven i saw that we were to be like a sailboat in other words we hoist our sail up and then god blows in it yes. and he propels us it's as though he is doing it but we are made available and then that that sail that sail only works if there's wind so we totally rely on god or we're dead in the water so that's the idea that I saw. So, it, you know, with that being said, 
what it, what is it that that is troubling you this as you're thinking about this what is it that's troubling you today because you feel like you're in this aggressive race to be noticed to be valuable uh, you know people always want to be recognized they always want promotion they uh, they want to be um, they want to be known as being special. We all want to feel special. We all want to feel valued. We want to be appreciated. However, if you're really perfected in love, then then fear is driven out. So really, what, what you, when you want to be noticed and when you, you feel like you're, you're a victim and, you, you're, you know, and, and the devil's beating you up, he's trying to program you to always be in need. But see, what if you really inside are made perfect in love? Because you are, God is love, mm -hmm. and you're made perfect in love, you're made perfect in God, and then it drives out fear, then it doesn't matter if people pay attention to you. It doesn't matter if you get noticed. You know, there's greater reward when you do things and you don't get noticed. There's greater reward for doing things in secret anyway. And that's why Jesus said, don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing, and we should do things in secret. And then the angels will report you. So then the way is narrow and there, you're going to have to make a decision uh, this week how you're going to deal with your life. You're going to take the narrow way, which, is a, a, which few people find. Are you just going to do what God has called you to do and just let God blow in your sails in the direction that, that he tells you to go? And don't worry about the world. You know, there's... There's a, there's a saying, uh, you know, talk about the rat race, you know, and I, when I was growing up, my parents would always talk about the rat race, you know, uh, you know, you, it's just a saying where, you know, everything's like calm in your house and then you go to school and then you go to work and, oh my gosh, the pace just picks up and then you're like, uh, everybody's rushing, you know, like would rush from class to class and you did, you know, like when we were in class, we got, we had to be uh, right there on time in college. So if they would lock the doors when the bell after the bell rang, you couldn't get in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was so you didn't want anybody to talk to you. You like you know you know you just want to get to the next thing. But after a while, then then after that, I have to run to get to work on time. And I, I, I worked three jobs when I was in college, so I I was always working, and and it just seemed like uh, this race. And I thought, when is this ever going to end? And, you know, now 40 years later, I'm still saying that, I mean, you know, because it just keeps getting busier and busier. But see, here's the thing. Um, one minister said, you know, it, even if you do win the rat race, if you're in a rat race, you know, where you're just trying to win, even if you win, it, doesn't that still make you a rat? If you were in a rat race, <laughs> you're, you're still a rat, you know. But see, I don't want to be part of the world. I don't want to be... Uh, you know, part of that world system. But see, a sailboat to me is a more relaxing idea, you know, uh, that we just kind of like lay back and we just let the wind take us. And my Christian life, uh, you know, as, as far as my walk with God, and I know that all you can attest to that, is that you know, so ever since I've been married to Kathy, we have to depend on, the, on God. And um, he has to speak to us because we have a lot of great ideas, but God's got to talk to us and God's got to open the doors. And we've seen him do that, but it's really not pushing on the door, banging on the door. Sometimes it's walking away from the door and going and, and, and just going to do something else. And then you'll hear the door swing, the door swings open. So um, be encouraged that this message has to be taught. It has to be accepted by you as students and as disciples of Jesus and part of, of Warrior Notes all over the world. You have to accept this, that there is a very narrow way. So if you feel rejected, if you feel pushed and pressured and you feel like you're competing against the world, just remember the way to life is very narrow. It's a very narrow door. And you need to get through it very quickly and never come back. And Jesus told me the way to do that is to humble yourself under his mighty hand. And he's going to lift you up in due season. So I want you to, to uh, discuss these questions on what you might be going through. What are some of the things that you're going through right now that's pushing you and pressuring you? And you might feel like you're you're uh, a round peg that's being driven into a square hole. And maybe God is just saying, you know what? I didn't make you for this. I made you for this. And maybe God's wanting to show you 
listen, the reason you don't fit in because you're not supposed to fit in. You're supposed to fit in with, with what God is saying from heaven. Um, Jesus said, that, you know, I'm not from this world. He said, uh, my kingdom is from above. And Jesus was just visiting down here. But then Paul said, we're just, we're just visiting. He, he said, we're just uh, str strangers or aliens or str in, this, in this world. We're not even from here. Uh, we're citizens of heaven. And I saw that when we were, when I was in heaven, I saw that. I saw that this world doesn't even deserve us. Mm. Now, can you believe I said that? But that's what I saw in heaven. I saw that this world doesn't deserve to have us as Christians, that we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and we're down here, and people around us that don't accept Jesus, they have no idea the opportunity that is right there. And that's why you have to tell people about Jesus. So let me pray for you and discuss these things um, among yourselves and, and, and try to figure out what it is that might be the, the prideful issues in your life that you need to deal with yourself. That just, just soul search. And what is it the Lord's telling you that you might need to trim down in your life? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your grace and your mercy right now. And just love on all our friends all over the world, Father. It's time, to, the Lord just saying, it's time to receive my love. It's time to re let me love on you. Let me love on you. You don't have to defend yourself. He said, I am your defender. He said, I've gone to war for you, and I've won, and, and I'm with you as a mighty warrior. I love you. And then so, Lord, we just submit to you. We humble ourselves before you, and we thank you, Lord, that you're going to trim us down so we can fit through the narrow way and that we can walk in the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And I thank you that you love us and that you reveal your love to us in the name of Jesus. God bless you all, and we'll see you next week on Warrior Church. Amen. All right, so week 19 study guide. Um, nobody joined except Viviana, but she already has the study guide, so I didn't bother putting it in the uh, signal group. And I'll talk about more after, after we do the study guide. I'll address that. So I'll go ahead and start reading. I saw this vision when God gave me the above quote, and I looked and there was an outline of a body that was carved into a wall that I was going to have to go through. It was really bright on the other side. I saw that part of me could fit through it, but my head was too big to fit. Oh, that's very, um, <laughs> that is, that's pr really great, honestly. The Lord told me that I needed to trim my head down and humble myself. The Lord said, I'm speaking to people in prayer about the narrow way, but they need to trim down. It's not the body size that needs to be trimmed down. It's the head and the flesh. I remember when I was being fitted for a helmet to fly on the aircraft, my head was bigger than normal. So they had to fit me for a bigger helmet. I thought about this spiritually. How when... We have pride, it can cause us not to enter into what God has for us. The narrow way has to do with obedience. He said, because of pride, our head can't fit through. We're called to submit and be obedient to his word. We need to allow the Lord to burn out the pride and trim us down to fit through the narrow way. When pride gets in the way. As a teenager, I realized the main issue that God wanted to work with within me had to do with pride. I heard the Lord speak to me about a year before I got saved. I was about 17 or 18 years old. It was the audible voice of God. and He came up from behind me while I was looking in the mirror, getting ready to go to school. He said to me, when are you going to stop being something you're not? He spoke out loud to me and it took, it shook the whole bathroom in my house. I started crying and I don't cry. God was working on my pride even before I got saved. I tried to pump myself up to be everything I needed to get into the Air Force Academy. I planned to talk to senators to try and get them to recommend me. I was trying to become valid Victorian and get a 4.0. I was doing everything I could to, to qualify. I had taken college classes in high school and I still would have had to go to summer school at a college to prepare for the academy. I was very prideful even when I talked to the senators in my state to get them to give me a nomination. 
you had to have a nomination from a senator or representative to get in. I was targeting all of them. I think there were five in Pennsylvania between the Senate and the House. The Lord was asking me, when are you going to stop this? A year later, I got a letter from Senator Hines, and I thought he would recommend me. The letter stated that out of 3,300 people, I was the runner-up. He said, "You so you will get it next year, but the Lord said, you're going to Bible school. You're not going to the academy. And I just started crying. Within a couple of weeks, I was in Bible school, and I never went to the academy. The Lord trimmed me down and humbled me. He said, you're going to be a mouthpiece for me. I sat in Bible school for four years thinking about Jets the whole time, and I thought to myself, what was, what has just happened to me? I was a brand new Christian. So, have you noticed any pride infiltrating the way you think or operate in your day-to-day -day activities? Today, you can close that door of pride in your life. Discuss and pray as a group to allow Jesus to come in and heal the wounds that have led to this feeling of having to be in control so God may tear the walls of pride down. And Lord, uh, we're going to make this prayer. So Lord, I just ask that you would help us uh, heal the wounds that had led to us feeling as if we have to control everything. And Father, please help us subconsciously be that sailboat that the holy that the winds the air that the holy spirit is pushes us and instead of us being the motorized boat that goes against the current i mean anybody who's saying who says otherwise is lying like i've had pride in fact um, I was extremely arrogant and, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm not arrogant because then that would be kind of arrogant. <laughs> I mean, you know, like the, 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 there's a saying, uh, there was a reward given in a church to the most humble man in there. And the next week on the next Sunday, for the next Sunday service, he wore his, they gave him like a badge and he wore it the next Sunday, you know, the most humble man in the church. And, and then they took it from him for wearing it because he wasn't humble anymore. <laughs> so I'm not going to claim to be humble. And, um, you know, uh, we just got to let go, man. Like I'm trying to get into the Coast Guard and... I mean, this is so applicable. I could do so many things to manipulate my situation because uh, I got to go to an eye doctor before they let me in. And um, I could go find an eye doctor, pay for him, tell him to give me a favorable report, you know. And I just decided to let it go. I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit handle it. I mean, is it... It's a really uh, great um, comparison. All right, so the narrow way. The road that leads to destruction is wide and very available. That's the way the world seems to go. You see all kinds of manipulation, lying, cheating, and witchcraft going on around you. There are very few people still doing the right thing. There's no accountability or sincerity anymore. When I was working for the airline, we found bags of money on the airplane, like tens of thousands of dollars coming in and out of Vegas. If anything was found on the airplane, we wouldn't be able to claim it. It would be the airlines to keep, but I would watch employees find three and four carat diamond rings and just keep them. I'm like, no, give that to me. We're turning that in. That's someone's wedding ring. And they were going to keep it. The same thing happened with the money that they would find. They'd split it up amongst them. I wondered, where's the accountability? There's a gateway to life, and that life is walking through Jesus. Jesus is king, and we're not. He is very meek, humble, and mild. He said, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus, that's Matthew eleven thirty. Jesus said, there is a narrow way, and very few find it. When I was on the other side, I saw that we were supposed to be like a sailboat and not a speedboat. In other words, we are to hoist our sail up, and then God blows in it, and he propels us. 
It's as though he is doing it, but we are made available. The key is that the sail only works if there is wind, and we rely on God, or we would be dead in the water. That's what I saw. That's why the rich, you see, it's not the fact that the rich, it's not having a big bank account that is a sin, right? It's the fact that the rich have so much money that they rely on their money instead of God. And that's why they don't make it's very hard for them to enter heaven. So you can have money if you can if you can overcome that and um and you rely on God instead of your cash. So that's like Jehovah's Witness thinking, you know, the watchtower is always telling us that we got to be poor and broke. Because the rich won't inherit the kingdom of God. I mean, it is the complete opposite of what the uh, message meant. All right. <clears throat> so a couple bullet points. Hold on one second. Let me check if Viviana came in. No, she hasn't yet. The spirit of this world pushes you to be aggressive. You would almost trip an opponent to opponent to win a race. You would cheat on ballots to get into an officer position. You would do other things that were evil to get promoted, and you wouldn't care who it was that got in, our, in your way. We want to be appreciated. However, if you perfect it, you're perfected in love, then fear is driven out. When you want to be noticed and you feel like a victim and the devil is beating you up, he's trying to program you to always be in need. God is love and you are made perfect in love. You're made perfect in God and it drives out fear. It doesn't matter if people pay attention to you. It doesn't matter if you get noticed. There's a greater reward when you do things and you don't get noticed. There's a greater reward when you do things in secret. Jesus said, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. We should do things in secret because when we do, the angels record it to the Father. The way is narrow and you're going to have to decide how you're going to deal with your life. You're going to take the narrow way, which few people find. Think about this. Um, is it better to give $100 cash when you were one of Jehovah's Witnesses? Did you give $100 cash into the box at the back of the Kingdom Hall? Or did you write a check for $100 with your name on it so they will know? As an activation, allow the Holy Spirit to blow on the sails of your heart. Rely on him for every need and promotion. Decide to surrender those things that cause you to move by your own strength. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. Have several of you share what you encountered in the, the exercise. Yeah, this is what the Lord told me about me getting in the Coast Guard. He said that... I'm gonna get I'm gonna make it right all the waiver I need two waivers to get in and then ship off to boot camp and he said that by the time I get in I'm gonna know it was him I got him because of him and not because of anything I did okay and uh <laughs> Uh, man, I'm waiting for Viviana to see if she came in. Okay, so another uh, another anecdote that I can share. Just give me a moment. I got to think about it. You know, um, when I was a new Christian, and you know, Jehovah's Witnesses teach the the. the the gifts of the Holy Spirit seems to operate. And so I was a new Christian and I was introduced to prophets for the first time, you know, and people that would get words of knowledge. And it was kind of like mind blowing. So I'm not saying to do what I did, but this, this was years ago. And I saw there's this YouTube prophetess. I'm not going to name her. She was prophesying how the economy was going to crash, etc. And uh, I was so so foolish that I decided I wasn't going to pay my taxes because I was driving the Uber. So you owe taxes. <laughs> and um, 
I'm thinking the dollar is going to collapse, hyperinflation by the end of the year, all these prophecies are going to come true, and um, so I'm like, I'm not going to pay my taxes, I'm just going to buy silver. <laughs> I got hit with a huge penalty from the IRS, I ended up pay owing like double what I owed, $2,500 in taxes, I ended up owing 5000 including penalties and interest. And I had, no, I was like panicking. I had no idea what to do. And I just prayed to the Lord. And I swear he, he worked things out and got me, uh, he paid, he, I miracle, he, he somehow like, he answered my prayer and uh, he used the, the government to pay their own taxes. So they sent me unemployment assistance, like from the state of California. And I used that to pay the taxes. And that was a miracle from the Lord. And I never had to repay any of it. That was the Lord answering my prayer. And I also learned a valuable lesson, you know, uh, to not, to not do something like that. Okay. <laughs> it was, it was God, you see, like I didn't try to do anything or lie. That was one thing I did not. I could have lied about my numbers, and I didn't. And I let the Lord step in and deliver me, okay? So we have to be like that sailboat, sailboat and allow the, the wind. You see, in, let me pull this up real quick. All right, in the Bible, wind symbolizes the presence of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, verse 2 reveals that wind from heaven carried the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. Wind throughout the Bible represents the Holy Spirit, regardless of which direction it blows. The role of wind in spiritual growth is significant as it represents the movement and realignment of our souls. So, you have to let the Holy Spirit, the wind, guide you. And you got to be that sailboat that goes with the flow. You, it goes where the Spirit leads you. You can't be the motorized boat that goes against the wind and it goes wherever it wants to because the current's flowing one direction and then you're you're going another way i mean i'm telling you that that Ke that analogy that kevin just created is one of the best i've ever heard man i'm gonna use that forever all right don't worry about the world and the rat race of rushing around to get things done one minister said if you're in a rat race and you're just trying to win even if you do win doesn't that still make you a rat? If you're in a rat race, you're still a rat. We don't want to be part of the world and the world system. A sailboat is a way more relaxing idea where we just let the wind take us. Jesus told me the way to get through life is to humble yourself under his mighty hand, and he will lift you in due season. It has to be God opening the doors. It's not banging on the door or push, pushing on the door, and sometimes it's walking away from the door. And then you'll hear the door swing open. It depends upon the Lord because we can have many great ideas. But he has to be the one who speaks to us. Do what it is that God has called you to do and take the narrow way. Okay, I see Viviana's in here. Yo, can you hear me? Hold on. I cannot hear you. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Okay. So we're uh, on page seven of the PDF. Okay, so what are some things that you're going through right now that are pushing and pressuring you to make a decision? Maybe God wants to show you that there's a reason you don't fit in. It could be because you're not supposed to fit in there and you're supposed to fit in with what God is saying from heaven. Uh, so if you want to answer, go ahead. Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. We can both put input. Um, I feel like one of the things that's, um, that right now is that's pressuring me or, or pushing me. It's like my family, um, they want me to remarry. So, um, they see my age and they're pressuring me. And, um, as part of my culture, we are uh, taught that, you know, a woman should never be alone. So, um, it does at times want to create that time pressure. But then I know I have to wait on the Lord and um, 
he's going to come in and do season and uh, it's going to be his will and not mine and not my family. So I need to stay focused at all times with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, I agree that, with that. I, I'm in a similar situation with my financial uh, situation. My family things I'm not going to get into, but my family likes to um, remind me that I'm a certain age and I don't have X, Y, and Z and uh, certain digits in, a ba in my bank account. And um, honestly, to them, they think I'm a loser, but and I don't fit in with them, right? And uh, it's all right, because it's on God's timing, not how the world looks at it. It's it's on God's timing. All right, number two, what is the Lord telling you that you may need to trim down in your life? I know for me, for me is definitely my phone usage. Like, look, like I got, you can see right here, the subreddit Jehovah's Witnesses, but then Here's the problem right here is r slash popular and this is a problem this worldly crap i need to trim that down um i believe that what the lord told me the other day was to to trim down my role as as a female uh you know i was i became a feminist and i still had some ideology that you know, was attached to that feminist movement. And so he, the other day, he kind of put me in my place and um, redefined, you know, my role as a female in society and in his kingdom. So yeah. um, I know he's still working in that area in my life and that I need to trim down a lot in, in that area. So that's what he was telling me the other day. Yeah, you know, I, I got the same issue with pride and... Uh... When it comes, like my grandparents, just getting upset with them and losing my, uh, losing my cool. And I have to remember that I have to honor my parents and I have to trim down my ego. Like I can't talk to them a certain way that I do sometimes. And, uh, yeah, I'm actively like being conscious of how I react to them when they try to, uh, you know, blow a fuse in me. And uh, on the road too, there's a lot of uh, very, uh, it seems a lot of drivers here left their brain, their brains at home when they went in their car. And I have to really control my anger when there's someone driving five miles per hour and there's nobody in front of them. <laughs> okay. Do you feel like you're in an aggressive race? Do you want to be noticed or valued or appreciated? How does God perfect you in his love. Well, God perfects us in his love by molding us and working on us and burning out the pride, like Kevin said. And uh, I would say one thing that I have worked on is not being noticed or valued or appreciated. I've that's one thing I've learned uh, how to control. Because I was going to give at my, uh, at my the church I go to here, they have an option to uh, put in all your information, your name, when you give. And, uh, you know, the idea of me being noticed and appreciated for tithing, it came through my head. And then I decided, I remembered that scripture, uh, do things in secret and your heavenly father will, will reward you. And so I, you know, I decided not to uh, put my information down. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the Lord has worked very hard on that, you know, in me, um, you know, growing up and being a female, I was always wanting to be noticed by, by my father and valued and appreciated. Right. And, um, you know, it was just that, you know, mentality. So I carried out my life trying to, for other people to appreciate me and value me and notice me. And I would, you know, go overboard for, for me to be, you know, uh, for others to do that in me. And so, um, I really never, uh, I found out nobody will, will actually, actually did that, you know? And, um, I felt like, you know, you cannot please a human. 
I came to that. And um, I also found out, you know, that the Lord had humbled me to the point where, you know, he stripped me off from, from my past, from, you know, my accomplishments and everything. So um, he has been doing a pretty good job on it. And now I, I'm at the point where I'm surrendering myself in every area of my life. And, um, you know, I come this far because of him and not because of me, because I, w- I did have a lot of pride on my on my accomplishments as, uh, you know, in the military as well as like in my um, education. And so now here I am, you know, um, he told me no on, that, on those areas and he told me yes on his kingdom. So I'm at the point of surrender at this time. Nice. Nice. That's good. Okay, number four. And we're almost, yeah, this is the last one. All right. Are you going to do what God has called you to do and let him blow on your sails in the direction that he tells you to go? What is he calling you to do? Well, the, for me personally, the Lord has called me to do this YouTube channel and XJW ministry. And um, another thing, the Lord, uh, concerning him blowing on my sails in the direction that he tells me to go, he told me before I ever make a decision that I have to pray about it for, for seven days and I'll get an answer within those seven days. So... That's how I let him tell me where to go now. And, uh, yeah. What about you, Viviana? Um, well, I'm allowing him to take me wherever he wants me. I mean, I had a hard time at the beginning leaving my, you know, all my, my, my stuff. And, um, you know, all my military careers, my, my desired career was completely gone. And, um, you know, now it's uh, wherever he leads me. And he's, he has told me, you know, focus on my kingdom, focus on me, and uh, I'll work everything else around you. So um, here I am. And, you know, I know his calling, my calling is as an evangelist. And um, now I'm just praying that he will lead me in the way he wants me to evangelize and, um, you know, be diligent in his kingdom. Yeah. That's great. Thank you for uh, answering that. All right, so we have we're going to close with a prayer, and uh, let me go ahead and uh, read the prayer for everybody watching on YouTube. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your grace and your mercy right now, and just love on all our friends all over the world, Father. It's time. The Lord is saying it is time to receive my love. It is time to let me love on you. You don't have to defend yourself. He said, I am your defender. He said, I've gone to war for you, and I've won. I'm with you as a mighty warrior. I love you. Lord, we just submit to you. We humble ourselves before you, and we thank you, Lord, that you're going to trim us down so we can fit through the narrow way and what that we can walk in the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I thank you that you love us and that you reveal your love to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let me stop presenting and come back on. All right. So um, is there anything you want to share? Now, okay, so this is the part where this is like the free-for-all, like six screens of the watchtower. Uh, for some of you guys that you, that t- tune into Rick Farron's uh, YouTube, uh, I like how he does that. He gives everyone a voice because um, I'm not a – um, this isn't about me. This is about us, and this is about Jesus Christ and Jehovah, God, and the Holy Spirit. So, Viviana, is there anything that you wanted to share about anything that's, you know, related to uh, anything spiritual or biblical? Well, you know, I just I just feel like right now um, a lot of, you know, the spiritual leaders are focusing so much on their finances and – manipulating for people to actually provide for their ministry. But we all always have to remind ourselves that it's not our ministry. It's the Lord's ministry. And sometimes they forget that and they want to be acknowledged. It's like Kevin said, they want to be acknowledged. They want to be known. And um, they forget the true cause of what 
why they're there and they forget the love for the lost soul so it's something that we should never forget the love of you know our, our of the souls and uh, our calling you know and um that yeah. we give all glory and all praise to to the lord in every situation in our ministries and um that's basically it okay thank you yeah this is the lord's ministry not mine it's not about my mantle uh this is jesus christ's ministry that's just, that's a really good point you made uh for me so like let me i made this post on warrior chat a while ago and uh, let me go ahead and pull it up here because i think it's a pretty good post Just give me a moment. All right, almost there. This is uh something Kev I was watching Kevin Zadai like back in January. I it was the first spirit school of the year, and he was talking about how he, Kevin mentioned how Bible commentaries are critiquing Psalms, and they were saying that David was too emotional when he wrote Psalms. That's what the Bible commentary said about the books, the the, the, the chapters that David wrote in Psalms. And um, I got two scriptures that prove that Bible commentaries are wicked. So the first one's in the book of Enoch, chapter 104 verse 10 and this is what enoch wrote now i know this mystery that sinners will alter and pervert the words of righteousness in many ways and will speak wicked words and lie and practice great deceits and write books concerning their words <laughs> that that's amazing that's bible commentary and then second timothy second timothy 4 chapter 3 i'm sorry chapter 4 verses 3 through 4 for the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and, a, and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth, but wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing, they will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold, and will turn their ears away from the truth, truth and wa will wander off into myths and man-made fictions and will accept the unacceptable so that's just something interesting i had about bible commentaries so if you're reading bible commentaries i would suggest that you toss them in the trash um when i was a new christian and i was being taught by a pastor in my uh he's my friend uh i he told me that i should get a bible commentary with written by John MacArthur. And I swear I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit say not to do that because the Spirit was going to teach me, not the Bible commentary. So there you go. Now, uh, regarding Signal, we found out today that I cannot share my audio onto the signal app so we're going to be switching to telegram and uh i will be deleting this group and we'll be switch and telegram i will be able to share um the video to everybody that's in the telegram group uh so sorry for the error and for anybody that joined or signed up and downloaded the app i apologize for that but it's a necessary adjustment anyways with that being said i appreciate everybody for joining and well viviana she's the only one so thank you and then uh, god bless everyone that's watching on the youtube recording and have a great night shalom